Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today I am putting together this transformer and the power supply to power up this uh, amplifier that I'm uh, starting to review. And I've done one little review on it already, but I want to I've powered it up with the DC power supply. I want to power it up with the AC power supply. And what I want to show you is that once I hook up this bridge rectifier, some of these caps to the output of this guy, we're going to have an inrush current, right? Because of these capacitors, we know this. And, and I'm suggesting we put a thermistor to limit that inrush current so we don't stress everything as well as stressing our fuse or having to oversize our fuse because of that and then uh, making it so that the fuse maybe can't protect the amplifier circuit. So anyway, what I want to show you is even without the capacitors and the bridge rectifier hooked up, that this guy here has an inrush current. So we're going to look at that on the scope. We're going to do this real quick video just to show you that even just turning the switch on with just a transformer um, causes an inrush current. The magnetic structure of this guy has to be charged up. This causes an inrush current that might surprise you. So let's watch. Okay, thanks guys. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you like this. Next video, we'll hook up the bridge rectifier the capacitors. We're going to look at power factors, some other things that happen and how the power gets dirtied up and why you might need a bigger transformer than what you think. Okay? Alright, thanks guys. Let's watch it. As I'm working on this power supply with this uh, big old transformer here, I will kind of show you what it looks like. Let me zoom in on that. Okay, there you go. That is the Abel Lindbergh uh, 250 VA made in China, of course, a 50, 60 hertz transformer. Uh, on the left there, it says blue and gray is one winding, violet and brown's the other. Now blue and violet have the dots. On the opposite side, the outputs are 25 volt outputs, and it's black and red is the one winding, orange and yellow the other. Black and orange are the dots, okay? Now let me just put that back down here. Okay, zoom out so we can see this stuff. All right, so there's our transformer. I've got it wired up with these um, nifty little connectors here. So I've got the blue and purple, the dot end, into the black uh, wire here. That's my fuse that's in here. Got the gray and brown coming into this connector and coming off the red wire, which goes through my uh, handy hand tech CC65 current meter and then I've got the switch here okay so here's my power cord I've made with this uh, little connector here I'm gonna go plug this in the wall and then what we're gonna do is we'll turn the switch on and with no load on the output we'll monitor one of the windings okay so red on one winding on the return and black on the dot end okay um, we'll look at that voltage come up and we'll look at the current inrush into the transformer and that's just a magnetic energy filling up the transformer and that's just an inrush current that you may not be really aware of and so I just want to demonstrate this this is another reason to put a thermistor um, let me pull one out whoops there we go that's why another reason we'd want to use one of these thermistors. There's a big bad boy. We don't need something that big. But that's why we want to use one of these thermistors here. Um, in line with the fuse so that we limit the inrush current. I mean, we'll have in, once we hook this to bridge rectifier. Bridge rectifier. Let me show you. Once we hook that up, the output of these windings to one of these bridge rectifiers. And... To some of these big old capacitors. This here's a 6800 microfarad 63 volt cap Cornell Dubler. That's a good old American made cap. Um, and anyway, good quality capacitor. Uh, we'll hook the outputs to this and then we'll see what inrush those capacitors create. And eventually we'll put one of these thermistors in there to show. How that limits the current. I've got a video, another video showing how thermistors work. Um, 
But anyway, this is just a quick thing just showing you the rush current here. Just transformer alone, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the switch on and we're gonna capture the waveform on the scope, okay? And this, this is gonna capture the current in rush and we'll get the voltage on the output. All right, so let's go up look at the scope. Okay, so now I've flipped the switch and I've cut a waveform. And that's my nice Siglent SDS-1202. Really like this scope. Let me scoot it up here a little bit, get a little closer. Let's zoom in on the screen. Okay, so now that I've zoomed in to the screen, you can see the yellow waveform is the voltage. The purple is the current. Um, the yellow down here says 42.4 volts peak and the current reached a peak of 10.4 amps. Um, over here you can see that's my trigger, triggering on the rising edge of the current. It's 20 volts per division for the voltage and the purple is 5 amps per division. Okay, and now we'll zoom in. Let's here, let me push this guy. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I just pushed the zoom feature, just pushed in here and it came up at the window there. So now we go back, and I'll even zoom in a little closer so you can see what we're looking at. So I've zoomed in this section here. I'm gonna use my, let's see, I'll move over that way. There we go. Well, let me, I'll just try to get a little bit, a few more cycles here to look at. But anyway, you can see right there, um, that was the inrush into the transformer, just to charge the magnetic field. And it's 10.4 amps, that first one. This next one's about, you know, the first grid's about just less than five amps, and then we're even less than that, and, and each one goes down. But this first peak is, th that first peak is really what we're interested in. So I just wanted to show you the inrush into a transformer with nothing on the output, um, no load, uh, just only the load of the magnetic um, structure of the transformer. So there's inrush current that we want to try to avoid. Okay. Once we add capacitors and a bridge right from the output, it only uh, makes that much higher. But we have 10 amps of just charging the magnetic structure. Okay, guys. Well, I hope that was useful, and I hope that uh, made sense. And hope you like that, and give me a thumbs up. Appreciate that. Thanks, guys. We'll see you after I hook up the bridge rectifier and the capacitors. And then we'll eventually hook the thermistor in to limit that inrush current.